welcome to a very unique episode today of Titling Test. Coming to you on site in the beautiful location of San Dimas, California. I am here with a very special guest, my blood relative, Holly. My sister, Holly, welcome to my show. Thank you, thanks for having me. Hello everyone. Not gonna lie, since I've been getting ready to plan and tape this episode, I have been hearing in my head Zach Galifianakis's Between Two Firms theme song. So I feel like... You can insert that in. Okay. But she might like fit the theme in the, the vibe of today. <laughs> but we're coming from you from, again, from San Dimas, California at Holly's home. And today's episode, we're going to focus on planning an event during a pandemic. And not just any event, but Holly's going to take us through planning a wedding as Holly and her fiance, Warren, my fabulous brother-in-law-to-be, are getting married mm -hmm. next year in Chicago. And as I said, we're in California right now. And there's got to be some tips and tricks, probably some bumps along the road, some things maybe that we wish always could happen, perhaps. I don't know. But this is a very unique time in life, and I always like to find the positive. So I thought it would be very helpful because there are lots of ladies out there who are planning things, are going to be hosting things because life is going to go on. And Holly is an amazing planner and for this really incredible event that's going to happen next year. So she could probably give us some tips and tricks that we could all use. And being that this is video as well as audio, um, if Holly has anything she wants to show us, we can, again, put the links and we can provide pictures or whatnot. Um, or maybe she's got the things like, hey, avoid this, do not do this, and here's why. So that's why it's always good to have video with audio. So Holly, again, mm -hmm. take us to what you would say has been the, let's, just, let's start, let's get, let's get the elephant out of the room. What's the most challenging thing planning a wedding in a pandemic? Oh gosh, there's, a, well, I think planning a wedding in general, um, well, this is my first time doing it. I did do it as a, a class assignment. Um, my maid of honor reminded me that we planned a wedding together our senior year of high school. Um, and uh, she brought it out when, uh, when I started planning and we laughed together about it and I had orange silk bridesmaids dresses, which won't be happening. Um, <laughs> hey. And a very expensive uh, dress that was out of our budget in our class. But um, I, I think just in general, planning a wedding, um, I think my, my instance is a little unique in that I'm planning a wedding in a different city 2,000 miles away from where I live. And uh, that is challenging in itself. But during a pandemic, uh, I think especially now that things have, restrictions have eased up a little bit and that people are back into attending weddings. I know we just went to a wedding, two weddings back to back about a month ago in the same weekend. And I hear people, I know people who've been to like three weddings just this month, that vendors are overwhelmed right now and extremely busy. and. I'm over here saying, oh, I'm looking at July of 2022. And that's really not even on their, it is on the radar, but at the same time, it's not really, it's not really an important um, time for them to be focusing on a wedding that's happening next year because they're all scrambling for weddings this year. So there's a lot of delay in responses. Um, there's just a lot of me following up, you know, weeks later saying, hey, still haven't heard from you, still haven't gotten that quote what's going on. A lot of vendors just saying, I, I don't have the capacity, I can't do that. Um, so that's been challenging for sure. And I think that is all due to the pandemic. So with vendors being very focused on the now almost rather than the future, mm -hmm. um, do they offer any kind of, do you see any kind of incentives, any kind of discounts or anything extra because 
you know, if they're saying we are trying to clean up from last year's push forwards, then we already had this year's that were booked that we're taking care of. And we understand we, you want our business and you're in the future. Like, how do they keep you from going elsewhere? How do they keep your business, your money interested in them if they're focusing on other things? Um, I will say that when we were looking at vendors, and this was last Christmas, so still during the pandemic, um, when we were looking at like hotel vendors for reception, um, the one we actually ended up going with did offer, there was a whole list of incentives, um, like kind of perks, um, if, in per like the tiers that if you spend this amount, you get two perks, if you spend this amount, you get three perks, you know, and, and so on. And, um, that was kind of cool. I don't know if that's like a specialty thing. I know you had to book by like March and we booked by January. Um, and we're still deciding on which perks we want, um, to pick. I think. I know one of them is we extended our reception an extra hour and got the platinum tier bar, open bar, instead of like the kind of standard tier open bar. So that was like one of the perks we got. Um, I think there were some other perks um, that we just haven't decided yet. So I think that was kind of cool that we got like a whole list of things. So like, um, I think they also decided to um, give us like a discount on like our brunch the next morning and, you know, the kind of things that they're throwing in. Um, but other than that, I really haven't seen, I've actually seen more vendors just say, I, I'm sorry, I, I can't do it. Like and drop the ball and, and then I have to go on to the next person. Um, I, I have reached out to some that are, I'm like, I don't need this for quite some time. And I'm like, can you offer me a discount? And some will say yes. And that's more like vendors I've seen on like Etsy and stuff doing like smaller type things. Um, but I haven't, I, I've really just seen a, a lack of, a lack of interest or a lack of response. And I, and it's kind of like, do you want my business or, or not? I don't know. Do you, have you run into any um, refund or no money back? kind of, um, issues with, you know, okay, I said I was going to have you this and they said, yes, we could do it. But then pandemic changed. Maybe they went out of business. Maybe they no longer carry that item because the inventory is mm -hmm. so delayed and they're not going to have, but you already put a down payment on. Mm -hmm. Have you lost a lot of money in planning a big event during a pandemic? Um, no, a lot of the, a lot of the vendors in their contracts have a clause about, um, COVID, and saying like, if we can't host, you know, like especially our, our reception vendor, like if we can't host a vendor, host our reception at the number of guests that we, you know, asked for, then we either get a full refund or we're able to push it back till, till we can. Um, so no, I, we haven't lost out on any money luckily yet. Um, I guess except for actually our, uh, we still, I still have my deposits down for my hair and makeup and photographer in Paris that we were supposed to do our engagement photos last May and um, we're not able to travel there. So I told them, hold on to my, my deposits, but I don't know if we'll be able to go anytime soon and do that. But um, other than that, we really were fortunate to, um, to not lose out on anything yet. So fingers crossed. Um, no. We haven't really seen that, but yeah, all of the vendors, their clauses say, you know, it push comes to shove and we can't host the event because the city of ours is in Chicago. The city of Chicago will not allow us to, um, that's definitely, we're not on the hook for that at all. So that's, it's reassuring. So you would advise anyone who is planning something to be sure there's a clause and if not insert one. Oh, I'd say in general, I mean, look at, over your contract. That's kind of something that Warren does in his day-to-day -day job. So he, I always have him look over all of our contracts um, before we sign, even for something as little as uh, some chairs that we're renting. Like he looks over them. Okay, this seems like a normal um, contract. So, so, I mean, regardless, look them over for sure. And there's lots to say, you know, oh, we won't get this deposit back. If we, if we change our minds, well, I think that's pretty typical. You know, that's not COVID related. That's just, if we decide not to have our event or something, that's, I feel like that's reasonable. Um, so. So you're planning a wedding and we're sitting in the groom to be's office right now while we film. Um, 
what is your take on having the, your spouse-to-be's involvement in planning and take it a step further, you're planning an event again in COVID-19 reminisce and you're planning it out of state. So do you feel all those factors have input originally when you got engaged, your um, anticipation of his participation in the planning or has it not adjusted your thought process into like, okay, he's going to go with me to the cake tastings and he's going to look at the linens or, you know, what is the dynamic of you and your partnership and um, has the current times affected that? Um, I'd say he's pretty easygoing. Um, I kind of, I like to do the parting planning and, um, and he trusts my judgment and taste in a lot of things. Um, I definitely show him things, um, but we really kind of decide, it's kind of, pre it's pretty easy that, you know, like, hey, are you interested in this? And, and I know like there are some sparklers, I think that were I'm like, oh, these would be cool, but like, mm, that's not like, I'm not gonna spend $300 for a sparkler for like uh, 30 seconds of joy or something. Like we both knew that that's cool, but not necessary. Um, we're both in agreement that, you know, what do people take from the wedding? They remember, the, they remember the food and they remember the music. So those were two things that we really are focusing on, um, having really good music um, and having really good food. Um, but we have, you know, really the same taste about a lot of things, but I do involve him as well. Um in all of our decision making, and uh, it's been fairly easy so far. Um, I kind of give him tasks to research, and uh, and he does it, and then we go over them, and um, and we know for like the cake tastings and the food, we actually were looking over some foods to try, and we both uh, decided we want to involve our parents in that decision making. That would be a fun thing to do. Um, you know, probably later in like April or something. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's been fairly simple. Um, you know, we, uh, we have not really had any trouble with that so far. So, so with food, taking that and being again, we're here in San Dimas staring at some gorgeous mountains and clear blue skies while my friends back at home in Carmel have currently me like it's rainy and cool so sorry about that um with that said when you're saying food and again this is gonna be in chicago illinois and midwest um our vendors for food and beverage does any of them offer to send samples of things to your location currently when you're playing event out of state for you to try and then like set up a zoom or a conference call or are you being like okay for cake and appetizers, whatever it is for drinks, we are going there and then we have to try it within there. I'm just curious if vendors more are saying, listen, we have this sampler pack and we can ship it to you for you pay the shipping and we'll, we can do a tasting virtually. Is any of that anything you've been experiencing or had the option to do or no, we have, we have to do everything kind of inside of where we're buying it from? Um, a lot of, so the food, is, you know, we'll go there in person. We'll plan to do that um, together. Uh, like I said, with our parents, we'll all do that in Chicago. Um, and that, I think they really only let you do that within a couple of months before your wedding. So we'll plan for that. Um, I know some like fabric swatches, I've um, been able to get shipped to me for free when I'm looking into some fabrics. Um, but a lot of it is through Zoom. We set up Zoom calls. They take us on a tour. They send us photos, um, videos of spaces and things that we're looking at. Um, I know in talking to the florists, you know, they'll do um, whenever we need, you know, whatever we're in town, whenever it's convenient for us, they'll do like a sample kind of like setup of the tables and we, they're like, we usually only do that, say, three months in advance, but because you're out of town, we understand you may not be here so often. So whenever it's convenient for you, let us know, and we'll get it set up um, and scheduled. So, um, I mean, it just it, especially dealing with, like, our church and stuff, we've been able to do a lot of it um, virtually through Zoom, which was super convenient because um, 
in, I guess, normal times, we would actually have to be there in person and, um, you know, sit through these like day classes and stuff. And we were able to do all that online. Um, so that was really nice and not have to actually travel um, to go do that. So um, that is one good thing that I hope kind of sticks around because it's, I think Zoom calls, even if you are a local, it's still much more convenient to do it from, from your home. Do you ever have times where you and Warren just honestly look at each other and go, I really wish that this was happening not in the pandemic. Like this would have been more exciting. This would have been more fun because I think let's be real. Every, um, when planning an event, you know, we, especially a wedding, many people build it up from the moment they're a little girl or maybe the moment they first fall in love or, me, the moment the rings on the finger, whatever it is, they get excited. And then there's that real life moment. Sometimes you're like, why me? Why is this happening? I waited my whole life for this. And now I have to have this happen to me. Is the world against me? And do you ever with our viewers and listeners like say, you know what? It's okay. I did have this moment and this is how I'm getting through it. Or I did get through it. Or have you honestly gone and listen, i None of this has bothered me, and it's the way it was meant for my story. You know, do, what kind of input do you have for people that might have that mindset of being like feeling their events getting ruined because of circumstances out of their control? Um, it definitely is unfortunate. Um, you know, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. So there is a reason that we luckily did not have to cancel plans in 2020, um, and that we planned for 2022, um, which it just, that kind of made sense in general for us because we had some other weddings to go to and we just wanted to focus on being able to plan, take our time, um, which has been great. Really. It's been great to kind of spread things out. Like last summer, we like during the pandemic, we were able to order our rings, which we actually had to go to pick up Harry Winston set up a makeshift uh, suite kind of with couches and chairs and in a parking garage. And that's where we went and picked up our, our rings. And, mm -hmm. the, and, but you know, that was like a big expense that we were able to spread out and just kind of take our time. And, you know, you put deposits down here and deposits, and then like you have five months to the next one. And it's kind of, I can't imagine doing it all like all in within like three months or something that, it's a, it's a lot of concentration. We kind of, we like the fact that we can, you know, we meet with a DJ, we get that all set. And then I can take a couple weeks and then maybe meet with a florist or like, I don't have to do it back to back to back. And cause that's exhausting. And we like being able to just kind of spread it out and take our time. But yes, um, I do worry. I actually, um, I actually ordered myself uh, a, bridal mask um in hopes that if i buy it i will never have to use it what is a bridal mask it's it's literally it was just a it's a ivory like lace um mask meant for brides they advertised it and yeah it it, it was so just, did you get the groom no i didn't because that's <laughs> i was like you can just wear a black one but, but with the hope <laughs> that we don't have to wear it you know, because you usually, you know, if you do something, you don't, you don't end up needing it. So that's my thought is that I bought it in hopes that I will never have to wear it. And I'm totally fine wasting the three bucks or whatever that I spent on it. So I'm like, that's fine. I just hope to never have to use it. Um, but yeah, there is a concern that, um, especially with Chicago being similar to LA, that, um, in the rules of capacities and um, food and drink and inside. And um, it's been, I, you know, I kind of, when I heard that the mask mandate was coming back inside, I was like, that's fine. Let it happen now. Let like, just let this, let this run its course. Um, we have an engagement party coming up in October. I um, hope that's all well, but really I, you know, I hope that by next summer, we really shouldn't have to worry about it. But at the same time, there's nothing I can do about it. I can't, um, I guess it's the same as like, if you're planning an outdoor wedding, what if it rains? Like, I don't know, there's not, you have no control over it. So um, I just, uh, 
you know, there's really, there's no sense in stressing about it when, um, you know, we'll just, we'll have to deal with it when the time comes. But as of right now, um, you know, I'm, I'm just going to plan as and expect it to be everything I hoped and dreamed it would be. So, but yeah, it, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate, but, um, I think we've stayed pretty positive. We've, we've tried to see the silver lining and everything throughout this whole process and, are just very thankful that we didn't have to reschedule and send out, you know, change the dates. And, um, and I think that that could have possibly been, um, just, you know, more stressful than, um, than what we're going through. So it's fine. So what is your mindset for staying calm as you continue to inch your way towards the special event dates, the world outside is doing its own thing. What is, do you and Warren have any rituals, any prayers, meditation? Do you have anything that you do when you start getting anxiety or nerves racking up or what ifs like to calm you and keep you focused on the good of a situation like planning a wedding um, with perhaps an uncertain time or do you just completely look at black it out and say it's going to be you know, everything will be fine I don't need to think like that what would you say you're doing if you're doing anything at all um I actually found a Facebook group of um for people planning weddings in general and a lot of it is geared towards um people planning weddings now and and there's a lot of talk of like oh what if COVID's still around or like and I, I think what's hopeful is that I see weddings currently happening throughout this and they're still taking place and um and I see you know the good and bad things that I would want um so just to know that they're still happening um and that's a relief and I I follow actually I started following like our DJ in Chicago and seeing them um hosting events in Chicago and I'm like okay like this seems like fine this seems like they're having a good time and it seems like you know it's looks normal I guess um so if that's happening now I I I'm not I'm not a firm believer that this I think we've been through the worst I think the worst is behind us um so I just kind of keep that mindset that uh it can only get better I don't I don't think you know with people getting vaccinated and everything else. I don't, I don't think, I don't see what happened in the last 12 months happening again. So I just kind of keep that mindset that, that we'll be fine. And we kind of joke and I guess it is a joke, but it's not a joke that if Chicago shut down, we're, we're just going to go to like a, you know, somewhere in Georgia and get married or something. Okay. I don't know. I get my peaches done in Georgia. I mean, our, our, we, it would be unfortunate because our date is our actual 13 year anniversary. So that date, I feel like is special to us, but if we really can't have, you know, if it really boils down to, we cannot have the event that we planned for with the number of guests we planned for, um, you know, we'll revisit it then. But, um, I, I don't know, you know, I, I joke we'll go. Georgia or North Carolina or something or yeah, maybe Carolina, so. I don't know maybe North Carolina come on and raise us you don't remember that from I was in high school no okay nope wow. moving on um wow that, then I lost mm -hmm. my train of thought yeah so I keep saying so because this is like one of those conversations that every time she answers my brain is thinking of a new thing is it you know I think everyone who's planning something would go wait I have one more question I have one more question so if COVID is, again, a main concern in 2022 and people are, some brides and grooms might be very concerned with, do my guests have their vaccinations? Are my guests vaccinated? How far along are you? Have you had the first, the second, the update? Whatever is out there. Um, is that a concern for you and Warren? Is that something you plan to deal with with any maybe special guests that are attending your wedding? They're like, listen, um, are you requiring because I am not comfortable or, you know, maybe I am not fill in whatever blanks. What have you dealt with or have you even had to or have you had that conversation if you need to have that with your guests? 
um, because we read about it and we see plenty of people voicing their opinions with what they're comfortable with and mm -hmm. even in small parties or dinner parties, you know, who's going to be there, who's not. I'm only letting these people in my house or I'm not. Um, how are you handling with a larger than normal gathering? I mean, I think we're definitely understanding of the fact that anyone we invite, if they're not comfortable coming and being in a large crowd, that's completely fine. That's their, it, everybody's got to do what's comfortable for them. Will we be requiring vaccination proof and stuff? No, um, we're, we're not interested in that. If the, um, I guess if the restaurant, you know, that we're at for our rehearsal dinner or our church or um, our venue. If someone other than us is requiring it, then we'll have to, you know, I don't, I don't know. If that's, if we're being required, then we have to abide by that, I guess, or somehow um, work with the vendor to, in whatever they're asking. Um, but that's not something that we're going to implement ourselves. Um, but, you know, that's not coming from us, so. Um, we'll just have to, we'll have to deal with what I, I don't, I don't really know. I have heard some restaurants, I guess, um, doing that, but, um, I haven't really heard of like event venues yet. Um, do you think private parties get exemptions? Have you seen that where they're getting any exemptions during a pandemic versus what the rest of that facility is implementing? I don't know. I, I don't, I haven't heard anything about that. So um, none of the, our vendors have told us any of that information. Um, they have not shared that with us. Um, so, so yeah, we'll just, we'll deal with it if it comes, but um, I haven't been informed about that yet from, from any of our, um, from our church or our vendors and where we're having the reception and dinner and, uh, in our engagement party even, they have not said anything like that. So um, I, I fully expect the, for our engagement party, at least in October um, of this year, of this year, that we will probably have to wear a mask to go, if you leave the room to go to the bathroom or something. But since we're food, serving food and drink, I assume everyone will be okay to not have their mask on. and. You know, I guess if you left to go um, to the bathroom or something, I, I assume you'd probably have to put it on. But I, and again, I think things change every day. Like literally what, from one day to the next, um, it's only the beginning of September. So um, I'm, I'm really, because it's ever so changing so quickly, I'm not, um, I'm just trying not to focus too much on it because, um, because we have no control over it and because, like it's it's just ever changing so why worry about something that may end up not happening so um. now with um your situation in particular to many of our guests and viewers of Tiling tests um are moms and holly is a fur mom she is childless by choice and has two kitties here one in heaven playing with mr big and how are you incorporating your two, which I was hoping one would join us, but clearly the sound of my voice is keeping her away. Um, how are you involving Miss Foxy and Miss Sassy in your wedding, if at all? Or um, for the kitty in heaven as well, which her name was Nancy. I do have a picture, a double-sided picture charm that I am having on my bouquet uh, with Fancy's picture in it. Uh, unfortunately, Foxy and Sassy will be here. <laughs> um, will they be live streaming? Is your no. wedding live? That's no. it. Is your wedding live streaming? No, I'm not doing that. They will not no. be watching. Her. No. Mm -mm. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I joked that in our engagement photos that we could, like, you know, put them in the photo. We could crop them in that we're each holding a cat, um, which I may still do maybe for our Christmas photos. But, um... No, they're going to be here, and um, I don't really have any ideas of involving them right now, um, but uh, Fancy definitely will be on my bouquet um, picture of her, so that, that I knew I wanted to do, um, but 
but our cats, um, they'll be here doing what they want, eating their food, <laughs> getting taken care of in the air conditioning. So they're not good travelers, so I would not take them away. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you want to assist in sharing um, as we kind of look to wrap up on this special episode? Um, and we have, um, unfortunately no sponsor for this one, but I have interest in people that have been coming through to continue sponsoring. So this episode is brought to you by Sisterly Bonds. Mm -hmm. Um, and then if you're interested in sponsoring Tidling Test, you know where to find me. This platform is getting bigger. Super excited that we're now on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And obviously our host is Buzzsprout, which... Um, ironically, for a wedding that is held in a religious facility, um, Westbrook was originally created for churches to broadcast their sermons. So, be it as it may, they are my podcast host. Um, is there anything you want to show or advise to people going through this? Or in, you know, again, I have some photos that I'm going to have linked up with this episode and. Holly wants to provide any links to help any future brides to be or those standing up in the wedding to help someone out. Um, I will have those linked in um, the marketing of this, but anything you want to off the cuff tell people to help them out when planning? Um, I mean, I think, like I said before, just spacing things out has been super helpful. Um, like I said, we picked our event, our reception vendor last January. And it's just like every, say, five months, we can make a deposit. And it's just like, that's so helpful rather than, oh, you, you know, three months from now, you have to have the whole thing due. Um, and kind of like, you know, I already bought my dress back in March. And that was like, okay, that's done. Check that off. Like, and, and I'll do the alterations probably in January. So I have like almost a whole year to kind of like split up those like I got the dress and then say the alterations which can be you know all these things add up and you know you can definitely have the wedding that you want just um be mindful and kind of space out um you know you pay deposits here and there and I think we like put down the deposit on our church like last October and then just kind of doing things ever so often so that you don't get overwhelmed and you have time to research the vendors, research things you want, and don't be afraid to ask questions. Um, I mean, just because someone sent you a quote of this doesn't mean, you know, maybe if you, if, like, what if I, what if I provided you with the vases for my flowers? Would that knock off? I, I think I asked, like, can you change one arrangement? And, and it, my whole, like, um, my whole, uh, I guess, contract like dropped a thousand dollars just from mm. asking one question. Mm. It's like be creative, and um, just because they put something out here, you can change that. I, I mean, you're like just because they said one type of candles. Well, if you really want another type of candles, tell them no. That's not what I wanted. I wanted this one, and um, and ask about even things like linen, like what's or chairs, what kind of chairs do you have at the venue? Like, you don't always have to go get the expensive chairs. If if the we made sure actually the venue we picked had nice chairs, because some of those chairs can be an extra $12 a chair for you to bring in. So like, take that into consideration when you're looking at venues. Do they have the chairs that I want? Like, or know that, okay, I'm gonna end up spending this extra amount of money if I want to go to this place that doesn't have the chairs I'm looking for, or like in our venue had the chairs we wanted, but they actually, their house linen, they don't have white. Mm. Their house linen is gray. And I was like, well, linen is not as expensive as chairs. So I was like, that's fine. You know, like I'll, I'd rather spend the money on linen and, and then have to buy 140 chairs or some, of some kind. Um, and I'd say also in this day and age, like, um, I, I think for our invitations, we're going to make them very formal, but we're not including like a card to RSVP to mail back. Like we're just going to have it all on our website, RSVP through the website. It's all there. I don't have to worry about things getting lost in the mail. I don't have to worry about extra postage, which last Sunday 
USPS actually increased the price of stamps, if you want to know that. Mm. <laughs> they are now 58 cents instead of 55 cents. So just putting that out there. When you're ordering, you know, 400 of them for thank you notes and sure. invitations, that does add up. So um, every little thing, you kind of just like take into consideration what do I really want and what don't I really need? Um, do I really need, you know, these little extra things? Um, or is this something that really is important to me? So like, you know, kind of just be creative, research it. I know Pinterest has been great. Etsy has been great. Um, and even on Etsy, ask the, ask the buyers, like, or the vendors, um, Hey, I'm ordering over a hundred of these. Can you give me a discount? And most of the time they're like, yeah, I'll give you a 10% discount. Mm. I'm like, okay, great. Like, so don't just go on and order something. Definitely ask around and then, um, just ask multiple different vendors and see who can give you the best price for the best product that you want. Um, it doesn't hurt to ask and literally the worst thing they're going to say is no. And I've had that happen and it's fine and I move on. So, um, I don't know. Yeah. Those, I guess those are the things that I've seen so far. Very cool. What is a quote that you live by? Um, actually, I think I said it earlier. Um, everything happens for a reason. I truly believe that whether it's good or bad, it, works out in the end and it may not work out for years to come. It may not work out from weeks later. Um, I truly believe that everything happens for a reason. And sometimes in that moment it sucks, but later when you realize like this is so much better and that happened for a reason, exactly. So, um, I have always believed that I've always been told that. And I always do believe that firmly that, um, good or bad, um, things will work out in the end and they'll work out better than you would have imagined, but, um, everything has a purpose and a reason. So. And will the bridesmaid dresses be orange? Orange silk? Gosh, no, I hope not. That's, I also wanted an orange prom dress for some reason. I ended up with bubblegum pink. So I don't know what my thing was with orange, but, uh, no, I don't, I don't think there'll be any orange. All right. Thank you for joining us today with a very unique, special titling test episode of Poly Culture here on site, the very first on site out of the office to be leading up by a press in San Diego, California. And as I always say when we close out, stay close by.